When I first heard about the concept of batch painting or speed painting, I didn't think it was something that applied to me in the way that I approached this hobby. I was very much of the opinion the process takes as long as it takes to create something that I'm proud of. This hobby has a lot of facets. To me, the most interesting one of them is taking a sprue from grey plastic, turning it into something with a soul that tells a story. As I've slowly been working through building my armies, the weight of having a backlog that at times grows faster than it gets completed begins to weigh on me. I'm sure this is a feeling many hobbyists have experienced from time to time. At this point, I stopped thinking about batch painting as a compromise between speed and quality, and started to think about it more as a mentality or thought hack in order to progress faster without compromising on quality or the overall look and feel of the army. In this video, I'm going to go over what I've learned while batch painting th three starter boxes of Stormcast Eternals. One of the main drivers for this video is of course my backlog, but also the way that I track my backlog to see what's left. In between hobby and day job, I'm also the developer of Hobby Life, a free app that lets you track the progress of your collection, make lists so you can target which models to paint next, and see stats including an estimate of when you'll be done painting your backlog. And my estimate is, well, not great. Thus, today I'm going to be batch painting to improve the curve. The first thing I wanted to do was a test paint. I picked a fairly ordinary model from the collection, built it, painted it, and there's a few things that I'm trying to determine from this process. Number one, should I paint in sub-assemblies? You can generally eyeball the model and have a good idea where it will be easy or hard to paint, but different techniques affect this process such as dry brushing, which needs a bit more room to work effectively. So a test paint will help show you these areas. In this particular case, I opted to leave the shields off most of the characters until I had done most of the base coats. Number two, does the paint scheme work? This is a new army for me, and I wanted to deviate a fair bit from the box art. In particular, I wanted more of a Custodes vibe, with different shades of gold armor and vibrant red robes. If you'd like to know more about how I test my colour schemes, a uh, link to a video is in the description. Thirdly, what are the batch painting steps? Let's say you have a step that takes 3 minutes, and you have 60 models of paint. 3 minutes is not a long time, but on 60 models, that's about 3 hours of work. This makes it a lot more important to know the exact order of steps before starting. And finally, where can I save time? At the beginning of the video I mentioned not compromising on quality. So this isn't about cutting steps, but finding more efficiencies. I'll cover this when we get to some good examples. Once I had my test paint job done, and I was happy with it, I started build the build process. Simple enough, just start working through the instructions and see how it goes. Let's check in with past me to see how that went. Whew. Okay, that took a lot longer than I expected it to. And my fingertips have been absolutely destroyed. So most of those models were push fit. I think about 70% of them were push fit. And it really hurts after a while trying to put all those together. Also, when you think about, say, 50 odd models, that doesn't seem like a lot. But when you actually see it... Like, I filled two crates of models doing this build. So this is an absolute ton of models. This is my first time dipping my toes into Stormcast, and it's been really cool actually. There's some really nice models in here. Even the older sculpts like this one here look really nice. So I'm looking forward to painting these and seeing what the end results are like. My best tips for the building process is to find a way to make it less monotonous. Such as, do it while watching a TV show, or more videos like this. Take lots of breaks so your fingertips don't hate you. Especially with push fit models, spend time on cleaning mold lines and filling gaps. It'll make things easier later on. 
Once everything is built, it's time to start working through that painting list that I created earlier. For batch painting to be most effective, you work through each step and do it on every model as you go. This way your body is naturally adjusting to the chore through repetition and you're not frequently changing paints as well. There is something oddly satisfying about the process. You reach models that you really like and want to keep painting, but you're forced to put them down and move on. Also, when you do finish a step, it's quite gratifying that you won't need to do it again anytime soon. The first step on my list was base coating everything in black. If you're planning on batch painting a lot of models, you can gain a lot of efficiency from having an airbrush. I fully understand if you're sick of people telling you to get an airbrush and love your rattle cans or hand priming, but personally I find that uh, the airbrush is the fastest option. I also have a video series on getting started with airbrushing if that is of interest to you. One thing I will point out here is that the tools you use may have different limitations under the conditions of batch painting. For example, my compressor, which has served me fine in the past, would overheat after about an hour of base coating these miniatures. So I had to do this in three sittings to get everything done. The air compressor and extraction fan are quite noisy, and spending an hour each sitting around them would be a bit uncomfortable. So while painting, I had a pair of noise-cancelling headphones and was listening to a book on Audible. Repetitive processes are a lot more tolerable when you have a way to keep your brain busy in the process. The next few steps look like a lot of work just to colour the armour gold, when I could have started with a Retributor armour undercoat and left it at that. So why am I proposing several hours of work? Well, it comes back to the quality versus speed argument. Yes, base coating with Retributor armour would look good, but I'd also lose a lot of depth and perhaps even need to put in a lot more time later on to add detail back into the gold to make it look really good. To me, the models are 80% gold armor, so it needs to look amazing. And these steps I'm unwilling to sacrifice in order to save time. As I go through each of these steps, I'm crossing them off on my list and adding the time it took. So I know roughly how much time each step is taking which gives me an idea of when it will be all finished. After finishing the base coats and going through the silver, I noticed myself procrastinating more than I normally would. I think I shelved the project for about a week, so this is another thing to take note of. Sometimes the most efficient path isn't the most enjoyable, and the process needs to be a little flexible so that it remains tolerable. So what I decided to do at this point was to scratch doing everything in full batches and instead shifted to doing models in groups. This had its pros and cons. The pros being that I was actually able to start finishing some models and it was occurring rather quickly because the time consuming armor was already mostly done. It also gave me more of a feel for how this model was going to look in its entirety by being able to see more of it complete. I could also start ticking things off in hobby life to give me some more endorphins and swing the backlog curve to be more productive rather than growing. The cons? Well, I wasn't painting as efficiently. And I was missing out on the benefits of being able to finish a step, move on and not look back. In saying that, putting paint on models and finishing models will always be more efficient than feeling too overwhelmed walking away from the project for weeks at a time. In the end, it's worth remembering that the plan can change as much as you need it to. I could swap to doing half the army, unit by unit, and then switch back to batch painting, and the results would still be far better than simply not starting at all. There are little efficiencies you may find along the way. For example, I decided at one point that waiting for basing paste to dry was taking too much time. So I just base pasted all of the models, and then I didn't have to worry about it again. There's still a bit of a ways to go, but the progress feels meaningful at this point, and I'm leaving the bigger, more interesting models to be the reward for the end of the process. I have a few more tips to run through that I discovered along the way. Firstly, you'll notice that on my to-do list, there was a few combinations where paints needed to be mixed in different ratios, I originally considered doing a few pre-mixed dropper bottles. Unless you want the colours to be the exact same each time, I'd actually advise against this. 
I want my army to look coherent on the battlefield, but those little variations in the armor color also add to the charm and individuality of each model. This is especially important with the older sprues where there are multiples of the exact same model. Next thing is wet palettes. I'll be honest, I've used a wet palette on a few occasions before, but this is the first time that I've really got the wet palette and understood its place in my toolkit. Wet palettes are super useful when batch painting, especially if you live in a warm climate like mine and it's impossible to keep your paint at the right consistency on your regular palette while trying to paint 5 to 10 models in one sitting. On a wet palette, it doesn't just keep the paints fresh, but I almost never need to add water to the brush. The consistency is perfect straight from the palette. When I first started using it, I would find the palette would start to mold pretty quickly when leaving it overnight. Again, the warm, humid climate does not help with that. One trick that I'm surprised works pretty well is actually not sealing the palette completely, but letting it breathe. You'd think this would also dry it out, but uh, my paints are perfect and ready to go two or three days later, just by leaving this small gap and no mold so far. Next tip, if you have special units such as flag bearers, save it for times when you are waiting for other models to dry. It's great to keep momentum and these models work great as something different to do while you're waiting on other models to dry or something like that. Because these flags are one-offs that aren't in your normal rotation, there's not really a natural place to do them otherwise. Next tip, find little ways to keep motivated. For me, one big one has been using the Hobby Life app to track progress. Uh, another is sharing the finished models on Instagram to get feedback and a bunch of likes. I also recommend getting involved with Discord communities. Two that I find uh, really motivating is the Tabletop Time Mini Club. Membership comes with a monthly review of one of your minis. The other is the Dana Howell Shame Golf Discord, where seasonal scoring is applied to your progress. You can also use seasons in Hobby Life to track this. Lastly, be mindful of posture and take lots of breaks. It can be tempting to keep powering through until you've completed uh, every step but you're not going to make a lot of progress if you strain a muscle in your back so make sure your work area is comfortable and ergonomic. So I've made some pretty good progress over the course of this video but I want to save the bigger models for a separate video as a part 2. I also have a model that I think deserves its own video simply because it's one of the more expensive ones in the collection and I'd really like to do its paint job justice. Oh, and the chariot is out soon, so I'm keen to see how that turns out. Another reason I'm stopping the video here, all of my hobby time lately has gone into this one project, and I'd really like to work on something else for a week or two, without feeling bad that I hadn't finished this video. So I hope you'll forgive me for that. Looking at hobby life, we've made a great start and learned a lot about painting more efficiently without sacrificing quality. If you want to try Hobby Life, it's free on iOS for iPhone and iPad. I'd really like to hear your feedback and suggestions on the Discord, which has a running wish list and also patch notes. So you can see the progress as it happens. Thank you for watching this video and please consider subscribing so that you will know when the part 2 of this video is ready, uh, the Star Drake and the Chariot as well, and if you like any of the other hobby videos that we have. I also paint Adeptus Sororitas and I have a lot of other things in the works as well. New videos are every one to two weeks, so please ring the bell so you know when they come out. Thank you for watching and I hope this has been helpful for you.